Hi, I'm Barbara Cashman and I'm trying an experiment today using silk mat to make a basket. And I'm going to rigidize it, but the reason I want to make this basket is I want to put a 3x3 three three piece of glass in here and be able to stack several of them and then go ahead and do a vitrograph mold and pull all of the colors through. I really don't know if it's going to work, but I just had this idea that I thought this might be a good thing to do with silk mat. Great thing about the silk mat is that it stays together. It's very solid. So I just cut these sides off of here. And as you can see, I kind of made a little template here. Now what I'm going to do is fold the sides up. Now I made, this is an 8 by 12 and I did it in a rectangular shape so that I could bend these sides up and have a prop for the kiln furniture and for the mold so it can be suspended properly. So all I've done is just try to, and I don't know how the camera is going to catch all of this, but I'm making a basket that's got sloped sides. These are stainless steel straight pins. You can get those from any dressmaker shop and that's the only thing that you want to use in your kiln. I use straight pins, stainless steel, a lot in some of my molds just to hold them all together. And even if they fire in, it's okay. They're not going to go anywhere. Just make sure your glass doesn't get stuck into them. So I'm using that little 3x3 three three to give me a shape and then I'm just preliminarily pinning it right now. The rigidizer will actually hold everything in shape once I get it all put together. So as you can see, it's going to take a little tweaking here, but I'm trying to get a, a sloped edge and then a lip. And like I said, the silk mat will stay together. It doesn't fall apart on you when you work with it, which is what I really like here. So I'm going to give it this kind of a shape. Yeah, that one's, that one's looking pretty good. Uh, and pull it a little steeper on this side. You see, you get the idea what, what I'm going after here. I'm going to be stopping the film so that I can get it rigidized and put all of these pieces, parts of the process together for you. I'll even pin this one <clears throat> on the back side. Make sure that it doesn't go through on my glass. And if I can get the pins out, I will, but if I can't, I won't. The rigidizer will actually hold the mold together. So as you can see, I'm just, I'm just pinning it back here. Um, all right, so we've got kind of a rough shape. I'm going to finish this off and get it put together just so that I can rigidize it and keep its shape. And then we're going to take it to the next step, which is rigidize it, cut a hole in the bottom. And I, hmm, let's see, it could be a square hole if we want to do that too. We'll see. When I get it to that part, we'll make a decision about that at that point. So I'll see you shortly. Okay, I don't know if I can piece all of this video together, but I'll do my best. I just thought I would show you the, the finished piece before I rigidize it. As you can see, I've just made this little square basket, pinned it all together, with stainless steel straight pins and I'm leaving like I said a lip or a ledge so that I can put my kiln furniture props on it and it'll suspend properly. All I'm going to do with this to rigidize it is put it in the just in a bowl with the rigidizer and just let it soak through. Um, I'm not going to do anything else with it except uh, let it air dry a little bit and then we'll put it in the kiln and cure it and then I'll start drilling the hole in it and show you the finished piece after that. Okay, before I 
went ahead and cured this. I'm not, I haven't cured it yet. All I did was just dip this in the rigidizer, just like glazing a pot for you ceramicists. Just kind of dipped it in the glaze, and the it, it'll soak through just fine. And I'm just going to let it sit flat and dry here in this shape. As you can see, the silk mat holds together beautifully. It doesn't tear apart when you maneuver it like this, so I'm real pleased with that. And then I can also do final shaping, just to make sure that it's the square shape that I want. And that's it. So I'm going to let it dry for a couple of days, probably, so that when I move it, it won't distort. And then we'll cure it in the kiln, and the next step is to come. Okay, picking up where we left off, I fired this mold at 400, no, 1,400, 1,450 degrees for mm, 20 minutes, uh, making, making it very hard. I did a total saturation on this mold to make certain that the rigidizer was completely, thoroughly in every part of it. Uh, you can see the stainless steel pins are still attached and still firmly embedded. What I also did was, I'm going to make a hole here in it, <clears throat> and um, I, I want a one inch hole. So this uh, water bottle cap is an inch, so I just trace that on there. And very simply, we're just going to drill a hole in the mold. You can drill it, or you can also use an X-Acto knife or something like that. So we'll go ahead and cut out the major part of it. It doesn't need to be exactly round or exactly smooth. Your glass is going to come through it just fine. Okay, uh, I've loaded just a little over a pound of glass in this uh, cane mold. You can see I've got a one inch hole in there and now we're ready to put it into the vitrograph and fire it up. 